Let's get more from Fernand Van Tetz in Amsterdam. Uh, Fernand, just how significant is this decision? So Marco Cavalieri of the European Medicines Agency called this an important step. Uh, and that is because, of course, uh, young people, though they don't get extremely sick from COVID-19, they can transmit it, specifically adolescents. Um, and so that is why this is such a step forward towards herd immunity uh, and hopefully ending the pandemic. Now, um, this is the first uh, vaccine that has been approved for use in this age group, and that's a large amount of people. About 7.5% of the EU is aged between 12 and 18, so that will really make a big dent. Uh, and it's the only one of the four vaccines currently approved by the European Medicine Agency uh, to be used on under 18. Now, Moderna, which is one of the other three, is trying to catch up. They just three days ago announced that they have also been carrying out clinical trials with adolescents, and they hope to apply for approval from the European Medicines Agency as early as next week at the beginning of June. And Pfizer is already looking ahead even further, testing its drug on um, children as young as six months. They hope to have results in July on the 5 to 12-year-old cohort and expect results by September on children younger than that. So how quickly will this decision come into effect, Fernand? So the European Medicine Agency said this will now go to the European Commission. It is up for them to then issue the final decree. And then it's up to member states themselves to decide if and how they choose to administer this vaccine to that adolescent population. Now, one country that is worrying to go is Germany. They already announced before this decision today that their adolescent population can sign up as early as the 7th of June. Um, but the big question, of course, is the availability of vaccines. The European Union is catching up. It's got 300 million doses that have been distributed so far. Around 46% of the adult population has now got a first shot, and they're hoping that 70% will have a first shot by summer. Um, but there's a supply issue. I mean, um, Johnson & Johnson said just yesterday that um, they've only been able to deliver 10% of the 55 million doses that were expected to be delivered this quarter. And, of course, AstraZeneca is in court with the European Commission right now because of its failure to deliver. I mean, the first quarter of this year, the first three months, they fell short by 50 million doses. Second quarter, we were expecting 180 million doses. They're only going to reach 70 million. So there's a, there's a supply problem. The good thing is that Pfizer uh, is jumping into that gap. The European Commission has done a huge new contract with them. They're going to deliver 50 million doses soon uh, and a whopping 1.8 billion doses through 2023. And the EMA also said today that they're looking to ease that pain. They've now said they can store the Pfizer vaccine uh, for 30 days um, just in a normal fridge. And they're also saying they're going to approve manufacturing sites as fast as they can to make sure those vaccines are produced. And if that happens, then, of course, we're hoping that people can get a vaccine, um, children can get vaccinated before they return to school after the summer holidays. Fernand Van Tetz, uh, thank you for that.